spot is that the mentality is fear. Once the coppers are working their way through with fear, people go back into the middle of the flock. And from the back they start, bah, bah. oh it's bad, the wolves are round, let's scatter. And the first thing that wolves do is go round and round and round and pick off people. And then they scatter, the, all the sheep and the herd scatter. So once they scatter, they're vulnerable. If you all stick together and you all stay together, you're not vulnerable. And if you all keep going in the same direction, not as sheep, but as wolves. I am not a sheep, I am a wolf. As I often say in the, in the past, are we men or are we sheep? No, we are wolves. <laughs> and you must stand up for yourself and you must stand up for your rights. You have to go and write letters off to politicians. You have to go and send emails off to the press. And keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Send it off to your friends and tell them to do it. And then you keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. And if that doesn't work, you then go and stand out the front of the politician's office holding up a banner saying, they don't believe in human rights and they won't protect me. You know, this, this cape of the bullshit the coppers have been doing is crap. You being held for 11 hours without charge, totally illegal. Out there, though. And who stood up for you? There are no politicians. No one's come out of the woodwork. The press is silent. I'm fed up with it. That's why, you know, I'm half a mind to stand here tomorrow when Koshy's coming across the bloody cross and grabbing by his shirt front and saying, Oi, you, are you a fascist or are you believe in democracy? Yeah. You know. The guy on the morning show who wears a shitload of foundation and tries to sell shit in the infomercial bits. Yeah. He came while the cops were raiding today. He came, picked the youngest, most vulnerable looking member of Occupy and went and picked on her. So? Turn around and say, fuck her off, son. Oh, that's, I, that's what I fucking did. But it was, Who are you? It's just... Bloody mercenary for the capitalists, are you? I, I just... I, I hope there's some footage of it so that we can show him being a bully and not being an objective part of the media and all of that sort of shit because... No, they've been told. That's, by the powers to be, that we're to be de delegated, we're not to have any to do with worldwide. Yeah. You haven't heard the 2,400 people, well, cities were occupied. And it goes for anything from a crowd as small as us up to 20, 30,000. They arrested the, you never heard anything about Oakland when they arrested 20,000 people were there and they arrested, so it wasn't 20,000 they arrested. They arrested 300, they found 100 of them in tiger cages, out in paddocks, yeah, FEMA were. paddocks. But you know, amongst us as a group. In, in Oakland, um, people were tortured, tear gas was put in their cells, they were forced to defecate and urinate and vomit on themselves, they were denied medication. They, this, is, this is a bunch of protesters from Oakland, they were just chucked in jail and fucking tortured. This is, yeah. this is the world we live in now. Huh? They've been denied their human rights. One thing I will not tolerate, and that's my human rights being crushed. I'll use every avenue possible. Under the UN Charter, I have the right to rebel at the end of it. But until such point, I can demonstrate. But if they don't want me to demonstrate and they keep on suppressing me, then I can rebel. But I don't want to do that, because I'm peaceful. I've had a gutful. And I just wish the bloody people online would start using the tool that's in front of them. I Send wish, out emails. I wish they would get off their bloody computer and come down here and don't have to participate. Get off the computer. We can do that. We can stay here. We, the people who have got the balls to do it can do it. But the people, the, the, the problem with the people who are typing on their computers is that they don't actually understand what's going on down here. They, they're not taking that's part in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, but they're, what, they're, not, they're not taking part in the conversation. So they're going, oh, all you're doing is getting arrested. That's boring. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just stop stop occupying and we'll, we'll oh, do yeah. stuff away we'll from occupying. One by one. They'll come around and visit us and then they'll go and hack into our computers and they'll find everything about us 
then you'll get denied employment and then you'll have all the other things that happen on the side because you're not part of a movement, you're just an individual who are easy to be picked off. That's what ends up happening. Yeah. And if you go that round, and it's called, it's called slack division, that's what it's really called. Sign online petitions, uh, when you do an online petition, yeah, okay, you're doing something, oh well I signed a petition online. You do a bugger all. What you should be doing is sending out the message, sending it out worldwide, sending it across borders. Same as the, same as the Egyptians did. I, I went and worked the day shift basically. When America went to bed, I got up and I was online. When I went to bed, England got up, Germany got up, all these other countries around the world, one by one, we shifted around and their message was going 24 seven all the time. The same with Libya. Except Libya got perverted because the Americans' dark, bloody, bastard, friggin' spooks got involved. And they buggered it up. It, it, was, it was great because all these things were happening around the world that people were sharing and caring. You know, we got, we got bloody medicine into Miserata, we got ammunition into it. You know, uh, what, are you, what are you doing, Glenn? You're online all the time, you're doing nothing, really. Well, now I'm shifting the message and putting it to people who should be caring, people who should be doing things. The UN, all those people. You go and write to them, you email them, you bombard them. You get onto places like uh, ASVARC, who is an online petition. But at least they've got one million members. And when they get a petition with a million bloody things on it, they take notice. Get up. That's just a bloody slacko mob as far as I'm concerned. Great. As long, and I think online involvement in Occupy and everything is great. As long as, as long as people who don't actually come down here don't make up what's happening down here, you know. Well, at the end of the day, like, a lot of people don't know how to interact with the public. That's why they're online. They're in their own little core group. They don't know how to interact with the public, they don't know how, the, they haven't got a right idea about their message. You know, and there's other people who work and they're busy. But what they can do is send out emails. They can write letters. They can get onto the press. They can make phone calls. We got a bloke out of jail of Hellboy Hammer. You ever heard of um, Gaza Youth? Their motto is, fuck a mess, fuck fatter, Fuck Israel. We want a live in peace. We want life. Hamas stops them playing rock and roll music. Fat R goes and bashes up their people because they happen to live in the wrong place. The Israelis kick the shit out of them just for being Palestinians. They just want to go out there and be, enjoy themselves. They can't even have a bloody beer without the door being kicked in and, and them getting a hard time. They went and put on a concert, you know, in a cafe. So they all got arrested and carted off and beaten up by Hamas. And it's like, nah. So we, they sent a message out. We made phone calls. Apparently they crashed the computers. They crashed the bloody uh, fax machine. They ran out of paper on the fax machine. They sent out a message saying, please don't send any more faxes. They ran out of bloody phone capacity. The phone lines crashed. Not because of the Israelis, but because Worldwide, people just phoned them up and said, get them out of there. What the hell do you think you're doing with those boys? They've done nothing wrong. They're just trying to be youth and trying to enjoy themselves. Now, back off. And the masses changed their policy. They decided they better let them have a bit of fun. They arrested people sitting down next to a girl in a cafe. Excuse me, what? What, he can't talk to a girl? What's wrong with that? You know, as bad as the Israelis. Same with... Fatter, fatter is going around buddy sticking people for money all the time, taxing them. They have to pay three lots of taxes to three different lots of people. Bugger them. I'll support them, I'll help them. You know, you, you can spend 20 bucks on a phone call. I'm a pensioner for fuck's sake. You know, and there you got these people sitting there in front of their computers doing fuck all. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, let's go away. You know. They can come down here for a night. They don't have to stay here all the time. 
I sat out there for three months in the bloody rain while they all slept in the railway. What was the point of that? Why did you come here if you're just going to go to sleep in a railway? You know, that was fine. I didn't mind sitting up there. I'm holding the fort. The coppers come around, I tell them to bugger off. You know, but this this point now, the coppers are at us all the time, every time. Fine. Roll up the banner, walk off down the bloody road, roll it out down the road. You know. Go down to Pitt Street Mall where there's lots of cameras where everyone can record and see what they're really doing to us. And then demand that the bloody press do something about it. Demand that the bloody politicians do something about it. Don't, don't just set the status quo. Because if you set the status quo, it just continues to slide and slide until, oh well I suppose we better go and get our tattoo. Uh, they've told us we have to get a barcode on our forehead so we better. I don't really want to, but you know, I'm told I won't get a job unless I do. You know, give me a break. No, I won't have my human rights crushed, Phil. I won't. And I refuse to. And I hope you're going to sue the socks off the bastards. You know, we've got all these bloody barristers that keep on coming up to us and saying, oh, it's terrible, you know, we'll to give you some legal advice. We've got to start saying, well, that's fine giving us legal advice, but we really need you to come and stand up in court and help us because we can't do it because we haven't got the resources. You know, that's bullshit. And just to say, oh, well, it's too hard. We'll, well, you know, we'll just fold up the tent and go home because the nasty man came around and told us to fuck off. We've had it before. We've had it before. You go, you get fucked, you piss off. Oh, well, you know. You want to lay one on me? Fine. Then I'll have an excuse to lay one back. But I'm peaceful. I'm not going to do it. You know, I've, I've been there. I've done that. I've stood toe to toe. Over and over again with bullies in every sort of variety. Christ's sake, in the funny farm there was enough bullies. And I sorted those bastards out. Just told him Amnesty International, I'm not having anything to do with them. Because all they're interested in is money. If they can't defend human rights in Australia, then what's the point of having you? Oh, you're not really getting shot or, you know, tortured. Oh, no, not yet. Well, we can nip it in the bud before it gets here. We can stop it now. But they just want to keep it going, you know. Because it's the same with the homeless. Billion dollar industry. They don't want to cure homelessness. No, they just come weekends, they go home. The homeless doesn't eat on weekends. So of course, of, of course they want people to stay disempowered, of course they want people to be existing at a level where they're barely surviving. That's, that's what homelessness services do, they make people exist at that level where they're just managing to survive and they're relying on all of these different services that they have to go to appointments with every day of the yeah, fucking week just exactly. to s survive. And they're getting 50, well let's see, uh, when I went for a job with uh, Sydney City Mission, who didn't employ me because uh, I wasn't a Christian. Uh, the average wage then for a builder's labour was 600 bucks a week, and they were getting 750. And it was just a street cleaning exercise. Get rid of the drunks off the street. They weren't homeless, they were drunks. Alcoholics, that's all they're picking up. But hey, years of experience looking after people. Well, they employ big bloody Maori who happens to be a Christian because he attends church and he's got his lever from his reverend. You know, give me a break. How much does the head of the bloody thing get paid? If you go around to all these charitable organisations, the directors are on over half a million a year. You know, oh yeah, but I have to have that to do the work. No, you don't. This craps me. It really does. And if you look at, if you look at what's happening with all of those, um, charities and stuff, it's it's kind of like the monopoly with Coles and Woolworths in the supermarket industry, except it's in the charity industry. All of the big NGOs are swallowing up all of the little NGOs so that there's no room for anything different or anything innovative or anything that might actually change something or help someone uh, what they keep <laughs> because on there's huge monopolies. What they keep on doing is hiring consultants. Consultants then go and steal or buy or purchase or the copyright on American studies. In public housing, 
30% in each suburb. It comes out of the Frost and Brownstones. And all public private comes out of it. And then you've got the Katrina, where they go and boot all the public housing tenants out of perfectly good housing and then demolish their building and use FEMA bloody to replace it. Down in Bay Street, God love a bloody Clover Moor, gives the land, which happens to be over the swamp land, to them because the buildings are falling apart because they've got subsidence. Well now they've cleaned the, demolished the buildings, cleaned all the rocks off, guess what, they're sitting on top of sandstone. There's no way they subsided. But you know, oh well we're going to build more of them. Yeah right, since last year we've got 1,800 less, less home housing units in New South Wales. Less. The year before was 1,000 as well. So it's two, nearly 3,000 home unit, housing units have disappeared off the, off the bloody books. Why? Because they've been given, given, not sold, given to private enterprise. They then go and build a block of units and then give all the ones that are facing the wrong way, they're really hard to sell. That's the one they house people in. The one they're building down Bay Street, the rooms are two metres by bloody three, one and a half metres wide. And they've got a kitchen, which you call a kitchenette anywhere, anywhere else, and a bathroom. Where are they going to store their stuff? Oh, you shouldn't have stuff if you know you, you live in a public housing. At least you've got a roof over your head. Yeah, you know, bullshit. It's just I, I was so angry. And My grandparents. Housing isn't actually affordable. Like, if if you're on youth allowance, for example, you can't afford to live in affordable housing. So where do you go? You've got to you've got to go and live in a freaking youth service where every aspect well, of your life is one. controlled and approved of or disapproved of, and you've got to comply with the rules or you get kicked out onto the streets. Youth services sold off all the houses they had. They had a whole stack of hostels. They had a whole stack of houses. They liquidated the assets, then turned it over to private enterprise. What happened to all those assets? What happened to all the money? Oh, that went in the superannuation for the workers because they hadn't been paying their super. You know, and it goes on and on and on. And basically what it is is stripping out public assets and handing them over to private enterprise. And if you want to find out about it, you go online, you go to Papua New Guinea government, who's the only government in the world that's had the balls to print the IMF's conditions, which is privatise everything, including schools, hospitals, everything's privatised, even though it's totally against the grain of Australia. After World War II, they insisted that these things were done. My grandfather and my old man and his brother, grandfather's brother, they helped build Hornsby Hospital. They actually physically went and carted timber there, gave it to them for nothing. Years later, it was a community-based hospital, it was a community-run hospital, by the community, for the community. They had a great idea, we'll get you more finance if you hand it over to the state government. They got handed over to the state government, and now they want to go and have half the hospital as private. The same with bloody um, Royal North Shore. North Shore Hospital is the same. You know, that was built by the community for the community, and now it's 50-50. They use the resources of the, the hospital, the pathology, the x-ray, the CAT scanners, everything else, and they've got their private hospital which they charge people extra for uh, using those facilities. Uh, rip off. The whole thing's a rip off. The free market will not provide, the free market will just steal everything. Well the free market's about ready to crash. We've seen it. The free market's just about to go into free fall. And you know, everyone's ignoring it. It's like, oh well, you know, it'll be alright, we'll muddle on and we'll fix it. Well, <laughs> that consumer confidence oh, you've got is okay. Consumer up. Oh, <laughs> useless things for, you know, not worth two bob. At least it's giving people in the third world a job. You know, we've got so much, you don't have to buy it. You just go around to rubbish chuckouts and you can furnish a bloody complete house out of them. Yeah. I've got a mob at the moment called Piermont Care. For years I've been saying, you know, we have to get in those basements and get that stuff for the homeless and you know, the people who have been moved into public housing because they move in with nothing. They've got a mattress on the floor and newspaper over the windows. But 
why can't they just take all that stuff? Well, the message got through after three or four years. The corporate bodies got together. They talked to each other. Good idea. It'll save money on, on rubbish chuck out. You know, instead of paying someone to cart it away, then they can give it away. And they'll get brownie points for it, which is real good. And it's a really good idea. Yeah, I, I give them credit for it. You know, they're going to furnish people's houses for it. Out of out of stuff which you and I call luxury items, and it's it's bloody ridiculous. You got people who throw things out after three months because oh, if you haven't used it for three months, you've got to throw it out. You know, it's only cluttering up the place. Go to Balmain sometime, and we'll go to Northbridge, Mossman. Yeah, go around there, and you you can furnish a house. You can get a whole new cutlery set, might as a knife or a fork here and there, but you know. Oh no, we decided we wanted to update, so we chucked it out. Fine. How about chucking it towards people who need it? I've seen them just, just totally demolish perfectly usable, good, luxury items, crush them in the back of the truck. There's people out in the western suburbs who are living with newspaper over their windows, but 78% of their... The average, uh, according to the Bureau of Statistics, the average Australian household on a mortgage is paying 78% of their income on mortgages. That's average. So there's people who aren't paying that much and there's people who are paying you know, 120% of their... Uh, and now we're getting all these people turfed out because they've been overextended. They're maxed out the credit cards. you got an idiot like one I got near me. She was $1,000 in debt, couldn't pay it, so she went to the bank to try and work it out and they extended the credit to three thousand dollars she couldn't pay that so they extended to six thousand now so every cent she earns she goes and pays it and then she gets money out to buy her food and half the time it's like oh well i've got any food this week and it's like oh yeah haven't you well i've got a fridge full i've got a cupboard full because i buy it on special i freeze it i store it and half the time i give it away to other people because i've got too much of it because i badge it and i manage well you know, it's just, it's just an un, out of kilter world at the moment, totally out of kilter. And these palookas come around here, oh, I'm a tough copper. Oh, you, you blokes to bloody move on. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, well, wait till their son and daughter gets, wait till their bloody wife gets booted out of the job. You know, oh, yeah, we've got two incomes. We make, you know, 100000 a year plus, so we're not worried. Yeah, well, you will be when your bloody riots start with all the other shit that social dislocation causes. Now, what's the program tonight in America? There's a whole street full of houses that are empty. People got thrown out of them. Now they're selling them for $5,000. Well, why didn't they rent, why didn't they drop the bloody charges instead of bankrupting the poor bastards? Why didn't they drop their mortgage payment where they could pay it and then they could still have a roof over their head? Now, over bloody Close on 250,000 people every night in America are living in tent cities. And they've got a job. They've got a bloody job to go to. Ridiculous. Oh no, we're all right in this country. Yeah, it's just, you know, if you can't pay your way, well, you mustn't be doing things right. Bloody ridiculous. Yes, well, that's my diatribe.